Hi, I'm Jeremy at Phytech, and I'm going to answer some of your questions on today's Q&A. First question, I've been running a 30,003 for many years now, finally moving to a 30,004 power adder because I am adding a supercharger. Can I just copy my current settings and put them in a 30,004 for a starting point? In fact, yes, you can do it with your cubic inch, your cam number, idle speed. If you're just adding a supercharger, um, the systems run very similarly. However, you're probably gonna wanna set up your distributor for timing control. So that means you're gonna lock out your distributor, set your power adder unit to have the timing control enabled, and you'll have to install the distributor correctly and set your timing with the, the lock timing feature in the initial setup. Other than that, you can copy all your other settings for fan, accelerator pumps, starting fuels. It should get you a very good close starting point. All right, I have another question related to that power adder question. Um, it's from a user, LA8LD for something or other. He said he's watched my videos on setting up the distributor, in particular adjusting the phaseable rotor. In the directions it states advance the rotor in the direction the distributor rotates. In his application it's a Ford, so it rotates counterclockwise. He advanced the rotor to the second lar longest mark, which is 10 degrees. In the video I say to adjust the phaseable rotor half to three quarters of its scale, but the directions and the, and the tech support say three quarters of the width of the rotor tip. I, in which he's asking which way is the correct way. Um, basically, you will want it so that if your engine were positioned at say 30 degrees, you would want your rotor tip to be lined up with one of the posts. That way at cranking, it, it'll still be intersecting the posts and then when you're advancing, it'll be intersecting the posts. So at, at cranking, you're gonna be cranking it around say 12 degrees. It'll still be intersecting that, the rotor tip will be intersecting that rotor, po the cap post for that particular cylinder, whatever one is on. Um, and then when it's on the Ford, say it's coming this way, um, at say 40 something degrees, it'll still be intersecting the post and at 12 degrees, it'll still be intersecting the post. So you have, have a range where there's not an arc forming underneath the cap, whether that is 10 degrees or three quarters of the width of the thing that it needs to be adjusted from. It's hard to say without actually, you know, having the distributor right there. Um, one way to do it would be on your, with your cap, and let's say you've already timed in your distributor um, and you're just swapping on the rotor uh, and the distributor's already locked down. So just take a, a, a Sharpie, mark where one of the posts is, move your engine to around 30 degrees like on the balancer and then see where does the rotor line up compared to that uh, Sharpie mark and then adjust it to be in line with that. That should get you basically full range of timing without any arcing under the cap. Let's go on to the next question. The Doberman gang, the question is, he's got a 30,005 and uh, on initial startup, he got it to run, but for some reason cannot turn it off with this key and had to disconnect the plug from his distributor. He has the white wire going to his fuse box, to his ignition fuse, and his blue wire going to the green wire from the distributor, which is the tack wire. Um, he has an HEI, it's a 355 and a in a blazer so it won't shut down with the key on. Oftentimes there's a back feed coming in through the key signal through something usually it's the alternator so if the alternator has the plug connected in it sometimes has a connection through the key switch to the dashboard the, you call them the idiot lights so the dashboard light will somehow feed back enough signal to keep the key switch on and the key switch on keeps everything else on so um, that's one possibility. Another possibility is the point that you've grabbed in your fuse block is not actually switched off with ignition and it's on all the time. Um, so uh, the alternator sometimes will need to have a diode installed in the, in the activation, the wires that go in to activate the alternator, not the output. It's just a, the one that it does for the idiot light. Our CDI box comes with a diode for things like that. However, I haven't seen it without using a CDI box to have that problem, but if you're having it, I would first research what's going on with that alternator. Maybe try just pulling the alternator plug out of the alternator while and see if that turns off the car at the same time that your key's off. Um, 
And if that is the case, there are diodes available to install into that one connection that is connected through the key switch. It is unlikely to be our system in any way. It's just because we are getting a, a sensitive signal and it's just keeping everything going. So the next question is from uh, David Von Andersek. Um, he's wondering if unlocking your timing is better for a big cam. He's running the Fitec, uh, I assume GoFi 8 on a 454. He's got a 2400 stall, BNM quick shift transmission. He's got an 800 idle target speed, but he puts it in gear and it feels like it's pulling. Um, so, and he's wondering if timing control and IAC can help bring it down a bit. Well, yes, if, you're, if your idle speed is properly set to say, like, let's say you have a target idle speed of 800 and you've got your throttle blade set so your IAC is close to zero and it still pulls at 800, that means your converter is a little bit tight for having an 800 RPM idle speed. Um, so doing anything with timing there isn't really going to make a difference. It's just if your idle speed is it attained at 800 and it's still pulling on you, um, you may want to consider a looser converter. But uh, also try a lower target idle speed. In sometimes situations like that, I will cheat the system where I set the target idle speed to about 700 but adjust the screws to get fully closed IAC and 800 RPM. That way when you're in gear, it pulls it down and only tries to keep 700. When you're out of gear, it's trying to get down to 700 but can't, so it'll just be at 800 or 800 plus in neutral, which is you know not very amount, large amount of time for having that. Um, if you had something like an LS kit where it knows where the, when it's in gear, then you wouldn't have to cheat like that. This is only for like the throttle bodies and things that don't have any kind of uh, transmission control um, where, the, the, where the throttle body doesn't know whether it's in gear or not in gear. Um, timing control can help you if you were to say have set the idle at a lower idle speed and uh, maybe you have a big cam and you don't want it to, to lug very hard on that cam where it starts to get a little choppy. So if you set up your timing control in that situation, um, you know, when you do add load, the timing control can um, compensate much more quickly than the idle air control can so that it won't feel like it's about to stall. It'll, the timing will catch the, the load application of the, of the transmission. It's able to keep it more stable without, you know, just choking out. Jesse Ford has given us a nice uh, smiley face and thumbs up. Thank you, Jesse, shout out to you. Um, another question is, this one's a fairly technical question. It's from I Sing the Body Electric, nice name. Uh, when the default calibration, the VE tables were written, uh, were they generated using a fixed fuel pressure regulator? Um, the reason he asks is because TBI mounted fuel pressure regulator will reduce fuel pressure when the intake manifold pressure is low, and he assumes the VE table should somewhat reflect this and since the ECU does not have a sensor for fuel pressure. Um, it's a good question, and it's a... Uh, it, the meaning is, um, on port injection, you have the injectors with the, with the tips in the vacuum of the manifold. On a throttle body injection, the tips of the injectors are just exposed above the throttle plate, so they don't, they don't experience vacuum on the injector. However, the way we have set up our fuel pressure regulator, we have a, a vacuum line connected to full vacuum on the throttle bodies. Um, this does cause fuel pressure to actually change across the injector, the throttle body systems. On the port injection systems, you would do that uh, all the time and that would cause the delta fuel pressure, the inlet to outlet um, pressure ratio to be constant on a throttle body. It's becoming not constant when we do it the way we're doing it. It is uh, compensated for in the VE tables. Um, there's also an, a calculation in the software that will adjust the, the flow rate of the injector. The, that constant is not a constant anymore. Um, However, in the throttle body systems, it's a it's a minor 
effect and it uh it's I, I think i have the tables actually zeroed out for that uh compensation because i found that it wasn't making a significant change uh, relative to to theoretical and it, it was actually helping cause the ve tables to be flatter which is more easy to have full range of adjustment um but it is a it's a it's a good question um the the main answer is that it's not it wasn't very uh, significant effect so i left it uh uncorrected but it's in the ve tables the ve tables are there just as a starting point and we let the learning take over a lot of the the ve tables so you may find like if you were to go to pure theory you would find maybe i would want to turn on that table adjustment and let it correct the actual injector flow rate difference based on on fuel pressure um however i have left that um, disabled and i've found no no ill effect towards it and so um you know and if you're trying to dial in your your ve tables you, you can still dial them in the same way it's just that it's you know you may understand that the ve table may not be a perfect representation of true ve so that's it for today's q a if you have any questions you can leave them below um, you can also find us on facebook instagram wherever please be sure to uh, like and subscribe and uh, join us again for another q a at fitech